Hi, with a prayer to Vigneshwara on this beautiful day of Ganesh Chaturthi, to our gurus, starting from Dakshina Murti, Adi Shankara, and till my Raghavendra Swami, I pray to all my gurus along with Vagdevi Shri Saraswati for their blessing on this journey on the life history of Shri Adi Shankaracharya. I am referring to this book called Atma Deetam, which has been penned by Shri Nochur Ven uh, Venkatraman. He is also called as Brahma Shri Nochur Venkatraman and he has done great research in great length and he has written this book. I would request each one of you to buy this book and read it yourself. It is an asset to be kept at home. So you will understand why I am saying that as we progress along in this life history of Sri Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya. Who is Sri Adi Shankaracharya? Why was he born on earth? Why did he take this avatar? He is the, uh, he's considered an avatar of Lord Shiva. And he came here to restore Sanatana Dharma because there were about 96 non-Vedic religions. So why is Vedic religion so important? What is Sanatana Dharma? Sanatana Dharma is one which has always been there. It is there and will be there forever. So that is what is Sanatana Dharma. How do we so confidently say that Sanatana Dharma will always be there? It is a very simple thing. Because Sanatana Dharma is based on certain principles. These principles will be there as long as there is humanity. Like for instance, Matru Devo Bhava, your mother is a god. Pitru Devo Bhava, father is a god. Acharya Devo Bhava, your guru is a god. Atiti Devo Bhava, someone who comes home unannounced, treat them like god. Apart from that, there are certain simple dictums like Lokha Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu. That's a prayer. Let the entire world be happy. Let the entire world be peaceful. Which means the entire world and all the elements in it and all the people, birds, animals, treat them with respect. Treat them in such a way that everybody is happy and peaceful. Now this Dharma says that the cares about every insect, every bird, every animal, every human as an important part of this world. And we pray that every one and every being be happy. We do not restrict ourselves only to a certain species called humans or a certain clan of humans or say that only to my geography. I only care for my people. It is not like that. When the prayers are so vast when the thought is so vast that you don't restrict yourself only to a minuscule, you know, a very narrow thinking. There is no way that a dharma which is so vast can ever disappear because there has to be at least one person in this world who thinks like that at any given point in time. So when, in fact, when we get down from our beds in the morning. We are supposed to say a prayer to Bhumi Devi saying, Hey mother, I'm going to place my feet on you. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to stomp. I'm going to dig. I'm going to do a lot of things on you today as a part of my daily activities. I request you that you give me forgiveness and I wish I were more respectful to you. This is a prayer that we do every morning. Imagine a, a person who steps on the floor with such a mindset. How will he ever harm the earth? Imagine someone who sees water as Lakshmi Devi. The daughter of the ocean is Lakshmi Devi. Imagine I look at water as Lakshmi Devi. How will I ever pollute the waters? How will I ever dirty the waters? If I see Ganges, the great Ganges, the river, as Ganga Mata, what happens to me? I say Jai Mata Di and I treat her with so much of respect. How will I ever throw a stone on her? Right? This is what happened when we went to Haridwar. We had this beautiful thing that, you know, my son was making a uh, shivlinga. He was pouring water and all that. And owing to his age, he also got naughty and he, th he threw a pebble into uh, the river. So, there was a sadhu who came by and asked, how can you throw a stone on your mother? 
she is our mother she is ganga devi how can you pour throw a stone on the uh, on the uh, on your mother it was such a beautiful thing just think about everything like that and you will treat everything with respect this is the beauty of sanatana dharma as you see god in everyone and everybody what happens is you start treating everyone equally with respect and there is so much of mutual respect and love for each other because there is god you see god inside them right now that is the way to realize god within yourself also so this is the basic philosophy of sanatana dharma that adi shankara came to resto when they were almost 96 non vedic religions in our bharat desha now what is bharat desha we all know uh, that bharat desha starts from the foothills of himalayas that place which is uh, the south to the himalayas and is uh, on the north to the oceans on the three sides as described in the vishnu puran because i think recently our prime minister shri mori ji also mentioned this in the parliament so we all know this <clears throat> so this particular this beautiful place is called the bharat desha why then did we start calling it india it comes from this concept of the persians calling us hindus because we come we are on the other side the geography of the place is such that the persians were on the uh, north of sindhu nadi and we were living on the other side of the hindu nadi sindhu nadi so they couldn't pronounce sindhu they started calling it hindu so the people who are on the other side of the sindhu nadi were called hindavas or the hindus that is how we start we started being called hindus and our country started being called as india right so with that introduction let us get into the story of shri adi shankaracharya so you'll have to imagine that such a great soul who understood the concepts of our sanatana dharma who within the age of 36 he walked across the country so many times he uh, he had these religious discourses he went on um these uh verbal wars to people telling them what their ideology is completely wrong and telling them that this is anti vedam vedas which means this is anti world right saying that you know you cannot harm people you cannot harm uh, you know the world you will be you will end up uh, harming the world at large so he did a lot of great feats which we will see in due course right so when if such a person has to be born where would he choose to be born isn't that an amazing thing to think about who are these great people and where are they born they choose the place where there is a lot of dharma they choose a place where there is uh, where there is a dharmic household right now when you, when we look at the conversation between rama and bharata when they meet at chitrakoot and bharata is begging rama that you come back to ayodhya and become the king i will be your slave forever rama says no now is not the time i have to listen to my father's words i will stay for 14 years and then i'll come back bharata gives a lot of reasonings to rama one of them is he says garhastyam shreshta ashramam he says so out of all the ashrams which are like you know brahmacharyam grahastha ashramam then vanaprastham and all that he says uh, sanyas ashramam so out of these four he says that garhastyam shreshtham ashramam what does that mean grahastha ashramam is the greatest of all the four ashrams why does he say that so when a person in, is in grahastha ashramam he gets to donate and take care of his um, you know people who are brahmacharis so those days people used to come and ask bhavadi bikshan dehi what does that mean they'll come and ask hey great soul bhavati okay with respect lady uh, with the respect bikshan dehi please give me some biksha so they would take that back to their uh, gurukulam and they would give it to the uh, guru and guru patni and that would get cooked as food for everyone it will be split among everyone so for that to happen 
this grihastha should be able to provide for it they would provide for it that is a dharma that they would take upon themselves whether the child is from their house or the next house or anybody else this is how that would happen they would also take care of the sanyas ashramam right so <coughs> for all the ashrams to come together it they were the focal point they were the uh, fulcrum of the entire thing they the society would run based on this one imagine today what happens the grihasthas who are earning today are the ones who are pay tax payers right we are still doing that duty as our as tax payers we have to be so that that uh, what do you call uh, the upholders of the dharma are the grihasthashramam people right in in a lot of ways whether you are into business whether you are into a job whatever that you're doing whether you're teaching whatever that you're doing you are still taking care of the society in your way so the fundamental of being a grihastha uh, being in a grihastha ashram is to uphold dharma so because of you there is going to be a fam the, the lineage is going to grow the reason for the lineage to grow should also be dharma so these are the so that is why uh, bharata says garhastyam shreshtha ashramam he does not cook it up he know this is a part of the uh, scriptures that is why he is able to quote it there so yeah so what kind of a place did uh, adi shankara choose or lord shiva choose so there is this place called uh, kaladi which is uh, near the Aluwa, which is near Aluwa, where uh, basically what happens is there uh, in Kerala there is a place called uh, there is a temple called there is a place called Aluwa where Shiva uh, is called the person who consumed poison, right? There there is a nadi called the Purna Nadi. It is a part of the Periyar River. Now why is it called Purna Nadi? It is a nadi which has been fulfilled. Its purpose has been fulfilled. So what does that mean? When is my purpose fulfilled? My purpose is fulfilled when I realize God, right? So the nadi has realized God by falling at His feet, and therefore the place where it goes through is called Kaladi, okay? And Kaladi means feet. Literal translation is feet. So the place is called feet. Feet of whom? Lord Shiva. right so the place is called lord shiva and the river is called purna nadi and this this is the place where nambutris were living a group of nambutris were living who are these nambutris what does nambutri mean nambutri means they who be, who believe in god right who trust god they are called nambutris nambikai in tamil means faith right uh even arvars and nayanmars who are great sages of uh, in uh, the tamil uh, literature from the vaishnava vaishnavism and the shaivism they are also called uh, nambis meaning people who have faith right so these nambutris are a brahman clan who were living on the banks of purna nadi at kaladi <coughs> in this clan there was this pa- person called vidyadhi rajan now this vidyadhi rajan was so learned and he understood everything about the scriptures so well that he was considered a um, kulapati the leader of the clan the you know he was the uh, anybody would go to him and ask him how is this done how is that done how can we do this how can we do that if you have any doubt go to the kulapati he will be the one who will be able to suggest he'll be the one who will be able to guide you so such a learned person was vidyadhi rajan he had a son by name shivaguru what does shivaguru mean literal meaning someone who is a guru even to shiva so this person shivaguru went to uh, was a small boy and he was sent to uh, a patshala what is a patshala a place of learning and those days a place of learning was a residential place of learning where they go stay at the uh, guru's place and they did all their duties over there along with helping the guru and the guru patni in their chores and they would have a holistic learning they would understand household they would understand uh, whatever scriptures that they had to learn and they would also go to work like you know go into the forest cut some wood do all those kind of chores also 
We'd have uh, learnt about this in the story of Sudama. Also that Krishna went along with Sudama into the forest to cut wood, serve uh, his guru and everything, right? So this was the system that was followed and Shiva Guru was also there. And Shiva Guru was very, very dedicated and he did not have a lot of, you know, this thing about when am I going to go back and I want to do this, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that. He was not that kind of a person. He was very happy taking care of his Agni. So every Brahmachari does, uh, used to do something called a Samita Dhanam. So Samits are these small twigs uh, of the banyan tree or, uh, you know, uh, the Palasha Vriksham. Uh, which is the tree which has the forest, uh, the flame of the forest, the orange color flowers, right? So those uh, twigs were offered to Agni morning and evening and that is called Samita Dhanam with prayers, right? So with Veda, uh, Veda chanting, these were offered. Now, the, along with Sandhya Vandanam, so these were mandatory practices for any Brahmachari. So he would do that very happily. And for the Grihastha Ashramam, there were three different Agni, uh, you know, uh, things to be done. As in prayers of Agni in three different things to be done. And that would be done by a uh, Grihasthi, uh, I mean, someone who is into, uh, who's been married and who's handling that kind of a uh, ritual. So he was very happy doing it for himself and he would also maintain the Agni of his, Agni's of his Guru. So this was going on and at some point in time, the Guru started wondering, why isn't this boy going home? He's finished all his education. Why, isn't he, why doesn't he want to go home? And just as he was wondering that, his father, his parents sent a word saying that we are getting very old and weak. Why don't you come home? Shiva Guru understood what was going to happen next, that he's going to be sent home. Therefore, what he did was he went, uh, he ran into the forest without telling anyone. And he ran and ran and ran because he just didn't want to get into the Grihastha Ashramam. And there, there was a lake. He just drank some water and below a Vatavriksham, a banyan tree, he just sat down to rest. Unknowingly, he dozed off. And in his dreams, he's seeing a huge uh, ashram, I mean, a, a colony of ashrams right and here he's he's standing there and there are so many vatavrikshams and he's standing there he's wondering what is happening here what kind of an ashram is this this place looks so good i mean this is like a dreamland for him so he go he's asking a person there which ashram is this this looks so divine i've never seen something like this which place is this and the person over there says you have come to agastya ashram there you see Sage Agastya Muni. So, seeing that he prostrates his hand because Agastya Muni is very short person in stature, but when you look at his knowledge, his he's a jnani like a Trivikraman. Trivikraman is the form of Vishnu who uh, is so tall. He went so tall that with one feet he could, uh, you know, measure the entire earth. So he could measure all three worlds with just three feet, right? So uh, where would I keep my... Uh, so this kind of a jnani, if he is here, you know, uh, what, I mean, what is this place? I mean, why am I here? He's so confused and he's so excited. So knowing this, uh, Agastya Muni just tells him this, Shiva Samvartanam Kuru, Manu Vrittanu Sarinim, Patnim Labasva, Sakshat, Parameshwaraha, Te Grihe, Avir Bhavishyati. So he says, Shiva, go get your Samvartanam done. What is Samvartanam? Samvartanam is your graduation ceremony. So that is done, that used to be done uh, when a person has to leave the, um, the school that they were studying in, the Patashala that they were studying in, when they graduate, a samvartanam is done. Only after the samvartanam, the person can, is eligible to get married, right? So he says, according to your heart, you you should get a wife. A person who understands your heart, you should get a wife. And you know what? Shiva will come into your house. Lord Shiva will come into your house. Go get married. This is what 
Agasti Muni tells him. And he wakes up with a jolt and he thinks to himself, this is not a, just a dream. This is a darshan. There's a difference between a dream, a dream and a darshan. When you have a uh, Lord come and talk to you, Bhagawan come and talk to you, when you have a Guru come and talk to you, it is considered a darshan, it is not considered a dream. So he understands that this is a darshan and this is a, uh, what do you call it? This is a command from Sage Agastya. So he walks back into his ashram. He goes back to his ashram. He uh, uh, does his samvartanam. His samvartanam gets over and he goes back home. When he goes back home, he gets married to this amazing person by name Aryamba. Aryamba or Arya Devi. Now, what does this word Arya mean? Arya means someone who is extremely noble. So noble that we look up to them as our leader. Right? So, for a child, the mother and the father are Aryas. For citizens, our uh, honest ministers are our Aryas, right? So those days, kings were referred to as Arya. Today, we do not have kings and queens. But those days, uh, kings were referred to as Arya. A leader was referred to as, as Arya. So if a lady has to be called as Aryamba or Arya Devi, we have to imagine what a noble soul she must have been. Right, so they get ma so they get married and they start living their life. How were they living their life? As I told you, Shivaguru was a very content person, and Aryamba Devi was the exact person in a female body. Right, so she was acting according to the wishes of uh, Shivaguru, and they both were. They both hardly had to talk to each other to say that this is what we shall do today. They would do all their rituals one after the other. They would read Vedanta literature and they would discuss the meaning. They would read Bhagavatam. They would read Ramayanam. They would discuss the meaning. They would do bhajans together. I mean, their life was so happily contented with just doing prayers and doing all their ritualistic things. Such was their life. Many years were rolling by as this was happening. At that time, one person suddenly came to the banks of Purna Nadi. How was he? He was dark as a cloud. He had matted locks on his head, which were copper in color. And he had a dark skin, black deer skin around his waist and had a stick in his hand. This person saw Shivaguru there and asked him, what do you do, Shivaguru? How do you... You know, uh, what is your day like typically? And Shivaguru explains that this is what I do throughout my day. And I try to live by the scriptures. This person was very happy on hearing. He said, I'm so happy to hear that you are so attached to these scriptures that you just live by them. But you know what? No Grihasthashramam is complete without a child. You need to have a child now. It is time and we have all been waiting. All the saints have blessed you. All the sages have blessed you to have a child and you need to have it now. This is the time. He says that and he says, uh, you know, the way the dharma will grow is through your child. You, you, So please, you know, have a child very soon. He says this and he walks away. Shivaguru is startled for a moment. He's like, who is this person? Why did he suddenly come and tell me this? I haven't seen you anywhere. Who are you? He asks. He says, just know that I am the one who is very interested in Vedas. I will do anything to protect the Vedas. Just know this. And he walks away. For a second, Shivaguru is standing there and he's thinking to himself, this person is dark as the rain clouds. He has copper colored uh, matted locks. He has a uh, the black deer skin and a uh, stick on his hand. Could he be Vedavyasa? He thinks to himself as described by uh, in Mahabharata. So when he thinks about this for a second, he's like, where is he? Where is he? I want to take another look at him. Have I met Vedavyasa? Am I having a darshan of Vedavyasa? He just runs towards him and 
uh, where the vyasa is not to be found he asked people around did you see such a person did you see such a person they said we have never seen such a person in this area these are all small villages and nobody comes without being noticed by others and there's no one who is you know uh, who can be missed in those places so he knows for sure that this is veda vyasa he's come and he's told something like this with that we come to the end of the first episode i hope i will continue doing this and you'll all be interested in this in this series i'm also going to be telling you where these places are i'm going to drop pins in my uh, episodes whenever there is a new location or things like that i'm going to drop pins in my episodes and if you plan a visit to kerala please go visit these places wherever you go in india if you see that in a particular episode there is a pin that i've dropped in my uh, you know uh, episode that is related to that area please go visit them they're all of great significance to our dharma jai bharat mata